In today's episode, I'm going to be sharing with you the six key type of relationships that you will need to be successful in the government contracting market. I'll see you on the inside. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Governees, where we teach you how to speak the language of government contracting. We are already loving this here, enjoying the, uh, the shows that we're having, and I have my co-host Crystal here with us. Hello everybody, welcome to episode eight of the Governees channel. We're glad um, that you are, uh, to have you back, and we enjoy bringing this information to you. Well, hey, today, uh, episode eight, we're gonna talk about the six types of relationship that's needed to be successful in the government market. And uh, I, I love talking about this, Sarah. This is one of the, my favorite topics to talk about how to build relationships in the government market and the type of relationship that's needed. So you yeah. ready to dive in? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Because building relationships is how um, we succeed in business. That's whether in government or just business in general. So yes, let's get into it. Okay, well, hey, let me uh, go ahead and um, share my screen and we can dive in. Uh, today we're gonna be um, using a slide here to kind of share with all of you the six types of relationship that's needed to be successful in the government marketplace. But as we go into this here, Krista, I have to say it's been a joy uh, doing this here with you. I've been a lot of fun. I think we've met a lot of great people in this process here. Yes. Uh, and every guest that we have, we've learned something from them. Absolutely. So today, um, we, our guest is Krista and myself. So, uh, you know, sometimes we mix it up. Sometimes we bring in a, a, a guest to share their journey, their contracting journey. Uh, today, we want to give you some great nuggets, some great tips about uh, the six types of relationships that's needed so that you can have the greatest success in the government marketplace. Now, if you have to guess, you know, when people are thinking relationships, they just think like, well, I just need to know a maybe a contracting officer. Maybe they think I need to know um, maybe the, the program director. But it's a little bit more complex than that. And so today we're going to really talk about the six relationship that's needed. So I'm going to go ahead and dive in here. So you are the vendor, you're the contractor, you're in the middle. And there are six types of relationship that's needed. And so we're going to talk about the green circles first. These green circles represent relationship that's needed in the government market. And then we're going to talk about the three orange circles here. And so this is our relationship triangles. And these orange circles here represents commercial or private sector relationships that's needed. And so let's start with the government. The top, very top green circle here, the first type of relationship that's needed is the relationship with the end user itself. The end user is the agency. The end user is the program director. The end user is the the department head, the supervisor, the employees that work in the agency itself. These are the people that have the problem and these are the people that have the need. So this is the first type of relationship that you need uh, to be successful in the government market is fostering relationship, connecting with the agency itself and understanding the pain points. So that this is really key. And uh, you know, when we say relationships with end users, we're talking about whether it's the CDC, whether it's HHS, DOD, somewhat GSA, or whether it's a local, um, local agency, a city or county or, or the state that you're in. All those are the end users. They have the need. Sometimes they're called the customers. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're called the client. Uh, but ultimately, for, for our reference here, we call them the end user. Uh, to clarify a little bit more as it relates to the relationship triangles here. The next type of relationship that's needed is the bottom left green circle here. This is the contracting office, which is made up of contracting officers. And the contracting officers, uh, they go by many different names. Uh, contracting officers, uh, sometimes they go by KO because DOD awards about 60, 55, 60% of all federal spending. So they, DOD does not use CO, the CO in the military stands for commanding officer. Mm -hmm. And so they use the word KO. So it's KO, CO, you know, 
contracting officer, the PCO, the TCO, the ACO, the CSR, the, or the CS, the, the COTAR, or the COR, COR, COTR. These are different individuals that work in the contracting office itself. And they, they have the authority to award you a contract. So the end user have the need but they, they, they have limited contracting authority. They can purchase up to, uh, at the micro level, uh, micro purchase level is 10,000 at the federal level. So a, from an end user outside of that, they usually need to go to a contracting officer unless they're using credit card. And uh, most uh, you know, end user may have credit card threshold up to $25,000. Uh, but if they don't do a PO under micro purchase or do a credit card purchase, then they will have to go to a contracting officer and go through a normal procurement process. So you'll need to have a relationship with the contracting officers because they have the authority to award you a contract. Contracting officer and your business, they can bind you into a contractual relationship. The RFP or RFQ is half of the contract. Your proposal makes up the other half and together is bound into a contractual relationship that's what we call it government contracting. The solicitation, the proposal makes two, two part of the contract comes together. Contracting officer handles that there. So they have the authority. And then the third type of relationship you need in the government market is this bottom green circle here. And Crystal, if you have to guess what relationship is this here in the government market? What, what's your guess? We got the end user, the contracting officers, the small business liaison. Small business specialists, yes. So small business specialists is the, the advocates. And they, you know, th through congressional mandate, every federal agency must have a small business office to help you as a, you know, to help the small business community to do work in the government space. So the small business advocate, they go by many different names. They go by the SABU, the Small Disadvantaged Business Utilization Specialist. They go by the OSTABU, the Office of Small Disadvantaged Business Utilization. They go by the SBA boss or the BOS, the business opportunity specialist. See, now you were thinking you're the boss. Well, if you get into the 8A certification program or the other certification program, the SBA assign you a boss. So you're no longer the boss. So Krista, you just got your 8A. So have they given you your new, your boss yet? Nope. Um, it should be two, two to, no, four to six weeks. I should okay. have, yes. Yeah, so you're, give, you're gonna get assigned a boss. So, so you're no longer the boss of your own company. You have a new boss with the SBA, <laughs> Business Opportunity Specialist. I'm fine with having this kind of boss. <laughs> I'm, 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 I can't wait to meet my SBA boss. That's true, yeah, they, most of them are very helpful. Now, some of them are not helpful, but most of them are very helpful. So, so if you get a good one, uh, we'll, we'll pray that you get a really stellar SBA boss so that uh, it will open up a lot of doors for you. Yes. And then sometimes they just go by the small business specialists. So the small business advocates, they go by many names. Uh, DOD uses a different name called the uh, Office of Small Business Program, OSBP. So just depending on which federal agency, they have different titles. Uh, you'll need a relation with them. Now, the end user have the need, the contracting officers, they have the authority, and the small business advocates, what do they have? Um, well, they have the authority to, they can connect you to these, um, these other entities within the, the agency, mm -hmm. the end user and the contracting officers. Yes. Yes. So they have the connection. So what, so a different word I use for them is they have the influence. Yes. They, they, they can award you a contract. Then they're not going to, you know, they're not going to award you a contract. They're not going to have a need for your, your services. But these small business advocates, they have influence. They can influence the contracting officer to use your business or not. Uh, they can influence the agency, a program director, a uh, you know a supervisor, and say, "Hey, your your agency, you know, have not met the women set aside program. Your the goal is five percent, and you're at two percent. And we, and you know, from the SBA, we have a great women owned business that have identified a forecast, you know, upcoming in, with your agency, which you consider working with them." So, so they have influence. Um, so these are the three trifecta in terms of you know, relationship that's needed in the government sector. 
Hey, I want to take a minute to say thank you to our sponsors of the Governees channel here. And if you're watching this here, please visit our sponsors because they make it possible for us to do the Governees channel. Our first sponsor is the Government Contractors Association. The Government Contract Association, or GCA, is a national trade association comprised of commercial contractors, small and large companies, and government agencies, federal agencies, state agencies, local agencies, government staff, universities, nonprofits, and many other entities out there. Their vision is to create access to help small businesses to get into the government market, to open doors for commercial companies into the government marketplace, and to support government agencies in accessing more qualified contractors. Their mission is to educate, facilitate, and advocate for their members based on becoming the premier government contract association with their three pillars. Learn more about the Government Contractors Association at govassociation.org. G-O-V-A-S-S-O-C-I-A-T-I-O-N.org. Govassociation.org. Now let's shift to commercial or private sector relationship you know, that's needed. What you're saying, hey, just, um, it's like just from my experience, with the COTAR, um, I know at uh, CDC, mm -hmm. the COTARs are actually assigned within the um, the agents, the um, departments or divisions. So okay. yeah, so so a lot of the reporting that happens from uh, the contractors is directly to a COTAR, and that COTAR, you know, has the influence with the contracting officer. Mm -hmm. So. That's a that's another layer. So, you know, you definitely need to perform well and have a good relationships with those a good relationship with those COTARs because they're the ones that are like on the ground that can actually see um, how you are performing as a contractor. So um, and I I'm, I'm thinking that's across HHS, but I know for a fact it's, it's in CDC that uh, many of the COTARs are within the, the departments. Yes. So, so the COTAR uh, engage, they're kind of like in between. They, they, yeah. they represent the agency and they represent the contracting officers. Yes. Yes. Uh, and so they speak on behalf, they're the technical experts. So contracting officer, if somebody is buying some, you know, some software for agency, the contracting officer, they understand software from a very high level, but they're not a technical expert when it comes to uh, ERP software solution for the agency. The end user, they just know they have a problem. They don't necessarily, you know, they may have someone there that understands it from a high level also. And so usually once a contract is awarded, the core contracting officer representative or the COTAR, the COTR, contracting officer technical representative, works on behalf. Uh, so they're kind of like, you know, kind of in between the contract officer, the end user. So you're absolutely correct. Um, they're, they're a key component in terms of relationship that's, that's important. Uh, but the uh, but these are the relationships that you need in the government market. Uh, now let's talk about relationship that's needed in the private sector to help business to be successful. So on the far right orange circle up here, these are other small businesses that you need to have relationships with. And what do I mean by other small businesses? Other businesses that may have different certifications that you may have or you may not have. Uh, well, actually, what well, you don't have. So, for example, if you are a woman-owned business, you might need, if you want to do work with a VA, you're going to need a relationship with a service to save a veteran-owned business or a VOSB certified company. The VA has a Vet First initiative where they, their first option is to award a contract to a veteran-owned business. And if they can't, cannot find a veteran-owned business first, then they can kind of go outside of that to other uh, small businesses. So if you want to do business with the, with the VA, you're, you need a, a partner with the STUSB or VOSB. If you want to do business with the CDC, uh, now, Krista, you have good experience with the CDC. What, what certification does the CDC have a preference for? Um, the CDC likes 8As. Yep, they sure do, because uh, epidemiology and the type of research that they, they're looking to get done, they rather sole source it versus do bidding. And um, so CDC, their contracting uh, in terms of certification of choice is the 8A program. So if you're a women-owned business and you're trying to do work at the CDC, yeah, there's opportunities. If you're a veteran-owned business, yeah, there's opportunity at the CDC, but their contracting cho of choice in terms of using a small business, the certification is uh, the 8A. 
-hmm. So you need a teeny partner that's 8A if you're not 8A certified. So it depends on the agency that you're working with. They, they have their own certification um, preference. They have their own contracting vehicle preference. So it just depends. But you as a contractor, vendor, you need small business relationships with other cert certified companies. And you also need other small business that have parallel industries. For example, if you are a plumber, you're gonna need a relationship with a electrician. You're gonna need a relationship with a roofer. You're gonna need a relationship with a general contractor. You need a relationship with, with a brick masonry. Uh, you know, so, so there's different niche market. And the reason for that is, uh, let's take a quick example here. If you are a plumber, the government tends to bundle contracts together. So when, they're, when they, they need a plumber, they also need an electrician to do this, the renovation part, some of it. So they may, they, you know, and, and they may need someone to patch it up. So as the plumber, you're going to work on the plumbing. They also need an electrician to do the wiring, and they need a carpenter to, to uh, do some of the uh, patching and, and fix up and so forth. So, so if you don't have a, if you're just purely doing plumbing, because government bundle contracts together like that, if you don't have other relationship with other small business with different parallel industry skills, you may never find an opportunity because most plumbing project, not all, uh, there are some direct plumbing project and some direct electrical contracting work project, but many of them are bundled together. So you'll need a uh, multiple type of relationships in the government market as well. So let's shift over to the far left orange circle here. Let's talk about a different type of relationship in the private sector or commercial relationship that you need. And these are large companies. You need large prime relationships. And large primes are required, first of all, to subcontract to small businesses. So if you're a small business, you need large companies to be part of your outreach and fostering building relationships. Now, what uh, in terms of large businesses, uh, Crystal, um, for what you do in your industry, uh, what type of large companies do you look for in terms of large companies? Um, technology companies are usually what um, I go after uh, mm -hmm. for my company, given that we offer you know, uh, project managers. And mm -hmm. so typically um, a lot of the larger companies don't have in-house project managers. They mm -hmm. have the development staff and, and, and everything else, but they may not have that project management, program management representation. Mm -hmm. So those are, you know, the large primes that we um, definitely, you know, try to um, uh, engage with, um, and, you know, we do that. You know, some of these companies have um, small business sessions or events mm -hmm. that you can attend um, so that they can get a better understanding of your capabilities. So we, we go that route. Um, and they oftentimes, again, have here the small business liaison. And, you know, you can reach out to those individuals. And a lot of the companies now have the um, DEI, the Diversity, Equity and Inclusion departments that they are including to ensure that they are uh, leveraging the resources from smaller uh, businesses. So um, yeah, that's been, been our approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and large primes are required to, in general, subcontract 35% to small businesses. So, they, so when a large company wins a contract, well, before they even win a contract, um, any project over $750,000 for most industries, and if it's um, I think construction, it's a uh, million dollars. Mm -hmm. They are required to have a few things. They need to have a small business program. And then within the small business program, they need to have a small business plan. In the small business plan, when they submit the proposal, large companies are required to submit a small business plan as well. In terms of in their small business plan, they need to have goals in terms of how, what percentage of contract they're going to use uh, women business to support. Uh, what percentage contract they're going to use, 8A business, veteran-owned business, hub zone companies, and just small business in general. So that large company, they have to have a plan. And so you, as a business owner, you, you need to have partnerships with large companies because they need to work with you. Um, and so, so in the, when the large company, they're called the, you know, in that small business program is run by the SBLO, the Small Business Liaison Officer. 
The small business liaison officer, sometimes in the commercial world, is called the supplier diversity director. Mm-hmm. The federal title you know, for federal contracting work, the, uh, the regulation says that the large company must have an SBLO, the small business liaison officer. So you will engage the large company through the SBLO or through the supply diversity. Sometimes the supply diversity manager, they don't know that in the government world, their title is SBLO. So, so if you ask for the supply diversity, you should be fine. But uh, you, you engage them for teaming purposes, you engage them for mentor protege relationship, you engage them for subcontractor opportunities. And so large companies are key to you as a business owner and being successful in the government market as well. And so let's talk about this last orange circle in the commercial sector here. And so uh, businesses would need to have relationships with your own government contracting department or what we call your capture team. So you got to build a team of professionals to help you to be more successful in the government market. I've met some talented uh, business owners. Some of them are very good at business development relationship, but they're not really good at proposal writing. Uh, I've met some people that's really good at proposal writing, but they're not really good with with the relationship side. Mm -hmm. And, And so it doesn't matter if you're good at many things, there's other things that you can't wear 20 different hats, right? right? For example, you need a proposal writer to be successful in the government market. You need a cost estimator. You need a capture manager or relationship manager. You need an accountant, a CPA, a compliance officer. You need a legal team, someone to, you know, because we call it government contracts. It's all about paper and contract itself. So you're going to need to outsource some legal work at some point. And so you need to build this capture team and your capture team is important for you to be successful in the government market. Now, as a solopreneur, some of you are solopreneurs out there, some of you, you're you're a mid-sized company, some of you are a large company. So you have departments and you have different divisions to support the efforts. But if you're a solopreneur, you're gonna need to wear all these different hats to start off. But sometimes it's better to, if you're not great at writing, um, every project requires a response. And whether it's a response is just a simple bid, like a seven page bid, uh, or a full blown proposal, which could be 40, 50, 100 pages long, depending on the size of the project itself. So you need a team. So now that we've shared with you the six types of relationship, I'm gonna do a quick review. And then Crystal and I, we're gonna share with you some practical about uh, uh, how to go about briefly and, and practically what, you know, what we've seen in the, in the industry about these relationships and how you can go about it. So, so, let's really, yeah, quick. so as far as that, uh, that team, just, just want to clarify that those, those individuals do not have to be uh, employees of your organization. Abe did mention you know, a subcontracting subcont- out, but you can, you know, have individuals that are a part of your team that are not necessarily employees of your organization. So I don't want the, the, the smaller businesses to get uh, confused and think that they have to go out and hire all these people and get all these lawyers. I mean, these are people that you can, um, you know, use on an, an as needed continuous basis, but they don't have to be employees of your organization. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. Yeah. You know, these are uh, 1099 contractors yes. to support you. Yes. Um, and so, or you hire outsource them as you need them. So don't need to hire them in house until you really have a un- ongoing need for them. Great. Great point there. Okay, so let's do a quick review. So the top green circle here is the end user. They have the need. The bottom green circle here is the contracting office or the contracting officer. They have the uh, authority. The bottom right green circle is the small business advocates or sometimes the small business specialists with multiple different names. They have the influence. Then the top right orange circle, small businesses, government bundle contracts. So you need other relation with other small businesses. And then you need relation with the top left orange circle here with large companies because they have, they, they're required to subcontract 35% to your business or to small business in general. And so you need relationship with the SBLO. And then bottom orange circle here is you need to build out your contracting department or your government department here. So, so these are the different relationships you need. So let's, let's talk about practical here. Uh, let's give a few quick examples. And so any, any specific you want to start with, Crystal, in terms of 
uh, what you've seen and some some practical advice you want to share with people? Um, so as as far as like large crimes, um, one, one of the things that I've done is to go into um, USA spending to see which large crimes are winning contracts within the agencies that I am interested in doing work with and then reaching out to them uh, based on that, because I know that they have the relationships already in place. Um, and being that they are a large crime, again, as you mentioned, there's a percentage of the contracts that you know have to go to small businesses. So that for me has been a great way to, um, to start with you know, building, identifying the crimes, the larger crimes, and then to build the relationships with them. Um, and, you know, the ultimate goal of that is to, you know, be able to go before them and prevent, present, um, you know, the capabilities of Spelman Consulting Group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's um, perfect. So with large prime, Crystal mentioned usaspending.gov, usaspending.gov. You can go there, click on the advanced search, uh, find all the companies that are winning contract, export into Excel sheet, and then uh, look through, see who's winning contract, and then you engage them from that way. So it's a great tip there. Let's talk then, about uh, yeah, how do you go about practically for small businesses? Well, I've joined organizations such as GCA. Um, that, that's one way uh, to network with um with smaller businesses um, that do the same so work. Yeah, the Government Contractors Association. Right, right. Okay. And then, you know, there are other um, organizations that um, I've joined where I've been able to connect with a lot of other small businesses that are either already doing business in the government um, mm -hmm. or that have an interest but don't necessarily know how to approach it. Um, so, you know, I would say, you know, the network that you have, you know, make it known what it is that you do and that you are doing work in this industry, that industry, that sector, so that people, you know, the, the, your next contract partner, your con uh, teaming partner may be, may be sitting next to you and you not even know it. So um, when you're at events, I mean, just, you know, I know we don't always want to talk about work, but a lot of times when you're having conversations with people, it does end up getting to that conversation of what is it that you do mm -hmm. uh, you know and and take the opportunity to uh you know tell people what you do because again you never know you might be sitting next to a contracting officer at church mm -hmm. That's <laughs> true. anywhere so uh you know yeah but you know just use use your your networks that you're in your professional organizations that you're part of or if you're not a part of that already you know you may want to do some research and see which which profess professional organizations would be a good fit for you to join and then meet uh, other small businesses that way. That's a very good point. Yeah, the uh, Government Contract Association, govassociation.org or NCMA, the National Contract Managers Association, NCMA mm -hmm. or FCA or uh, you know, NDIA. Many of these government-centric organizations have a lot of different um, events and, and you know, so you'll meet a lot of different other small businesses in the industry, or just your regular chamber of commerce. Your, you know, the, the regular organizations uh, that you're a part of. You, they themselves don't need to be a government contractor. The, the, when we talk about other small business that you need to have partnership with. You're the only one that needs to be registering SAM. You can be the prime and then you sub it out to the other uh, parallel industry partners so that they can support the work that needs to be done. So if you're a plumber, the electrician does not need to be registered in SAM or, or in the, with the state uh, that you're, do, you're, being, you're a vendor with. You just need to be registered and then they, they are your subcontractor on those projects. So you need a relationship with them, not because both of you need to be registered in SAM. Just one company needs to be registered in SAM. So any organization will be good for that. One last thing about small businesses is I love this website called dsbs.sba.gov. D-S-B-S, David Sam, Boy Sam, .sba.gov. And on that website, you can go in there and you can search for, you know, different 8 company, women-owned business, veteran-owned business. And it, it will pull you a whole list. Now, there's another new site called govgenie.com, 
And GovGenie.com, you can go set up an account, go in there, go to the directory and search for businesses in there uh, so that you can find other small businesses uh, that you can partner with. And they will tell you, uh, put in the next code and will tell you the companies that are you know, in, the, in that next code. So GovGenie.com or DSBS.gov, any of those resources would be great. Well, there's lots of things we can talk about, uh, but those are some practical things that in terms of relationship building uh, that you yourself uh, can actually go out there and foster. And then I wanna you know, wrap it up by talking about the building your capture team in terms of your government contracting department here. Uh, you know, same thing, resources in terms of chambers, association, different groups like that, uh, that you can use to build up these core here but ultimately, um, you know, the Government Contract Association is a reference point. They help facilitate relationships for you. So if you, if you are looking for a proposal writer, they have connections to proposal writer. If you're looking for an uh, attorney to defend a protest or to help you, uh, you know, do a protest or review contracts and different things like that. So there's lots of different resources out there. Uh, in terms of relationship with government agencies, obviously, uh, you know, today's class, I would love to go in a future class, uh, come visit, come back and listen to some of our uh, podcasts and webcasts here, because we're going to go into a deeper dive into, in terms of how to really dig into, uh, build a relationship, finding key relationship with contract officer, with end users, with small business advocates, how to go about do that, how to go find small business relationship, large prime relationship, and, and, and more of your capture team, how to build that out. But today we wanna to give you the six key type of relationship that you're, that's needed for you to be successful. This is what we call the relationship triangles. And if you wanna understand government contracting in one picture, in one image, this is it right here. When you understand this here and these six type of relationships, that's where you're going to have the greatest success. The more of these relationships that you have, the greater success you're going to have. If you only have one or two relationships, you're not going to have the greatest level of success. So, so you need all six to, to have the greatest opportunity and to open up more doors for you. So with that said, Crystal, any closing comments before we wrap up today's uh, episode? I concur with what you said about these being the, uh, this being it. You have to have the relationships relationships it equals success. You have to have solid relationships and start building those relationships now. Build them before you need them. Uh, so don't wait. Yeah, that, that uh, reminds me um, uh, a quote uh, that dig your well before you're thirsty, right? Yeah, yes. Don't wait until you're thirsty and start digging for well, start looking for water. Um, you want to, you know, relationship it the same way. Don't wait until you need an attorney. Mm -hmm. By that time, it's too late. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You need to build relationship with the accountant, with the attorney, with the proposal writer. You need build relationship with the end user. The relationships come before your actual need. Right. So, so that's really a key. And that's why, you know, uh, in the retail world, we, we talk about location, location, location. In the online world, we talk about domain name, domain name, domain name. Well, the government contracting world, what do we talk about, Crystal? Relationships, relationships, relationships. Absolutely. So with that said, thanks for joining us for another episode of Governees, and we will see you another show. Take care, everybody. Bye. All right, so now I'm going to do a quick teaser. Um, so I'm going to do a quick teaser about this here, and then uh, that way the, the guys can just cut it. You, you said before that you wanted to do a giveaway. Did you do that last week? I did, yeah. I just put it um, I, okay. put in there. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hey, welcome to another episode of Gov uh, Governees. Oh, not good, not good. Another take. <laughs> welcome to another episode of Governees, where we teach you how to speak the language of government contracting. In today's episode... Crystal and myself, we're going to share with you the six key type of relationship that you need to be successful in the government market. We're going to talk to you about you as a contractor, relationship that you need in the government sector, and relationship that you need in the commercial sector to foster 
uh, and strengthen the greatest chance for you to be successful in the government sector. We'll see you on the inside. Hey, uh, final thoughts here. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Governance. Uh, Chris and myself, we want to give you a copy of this, uh, this slide here of the six type of relationships that you need to be successful. And we want to give to you absolutely, there's no cost to it. Uh, we just, all we ask is for you to be a subscriber, uh, click on the notification bell and just leave a comment below. And then if you check out, uh, click on the show more button on, on, the, on the bottom here of, of the channel here, we will uh, show you exactly what you need to do. So all we ask is subscribe, hit the notification bell and, and leave a comment. And then shoot us an email to info at govgenie.com, info at govgenie.com. Uh, and then uh, we'll send you a copy of this here so that you can use it to help you be successful in the government sector. All right, take care. Our second sponsor is GovGenie. GovGenie, stop wishing, start winning. GovGenie is on a mission to democratize government contracting opportunities for small women and minority owned businesses. Their objective is to change the disparities for small businesses in the $2 trillion government marketplace. GovGenie is like LinkedIn for government contractors. It is a social CRM unifying the fragmented government procurement life cycle and uses AI and ML to help users to socialize, foster relationships, find bids, search for teaming partners, manage proposals, source industry events, and facilitate the capture management process. This saves you, the user, money and time with one streamlined platform versus nine many other disparate software out there. Learn more about GovGenie at govgenie.com. G-O-V-G-E-N-I-E.com.